Hi guys, in this literary devices video, I'll be talking about alliteration. Now again, this is something you've probably come across before high school, so just a review. Now, all of these are examples of alliteration. We've got Dunkin' Donuts, SpongeBob SquarePants, Bugs Bunny, Coca-Cola, PayPal, Mickey Mouse, Peter Parker. What do you notice about all of them? In each one, both words begin with the same letter. Uh, when words begin in succession with the same letter, um, or you've got a sentence with a lot of words beginning with the same letter, this is an example of alliteration. So let's see a few examples from literature and talk about why. The first is uh, from The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And it reads, The fair breeze blew, the white foam flew, the furrow followed free. We were the first that ever burst into the silent sea. Now you can hear the rhythm and the music in this. It's actually from, uh, it's a ballad, it's a really famous ballad. But you can really hear the music. And because of that, I think it also makes you remember it. It really sticks out in your brain. Um, so it's easier to recite, but it's easier to remember as well. The next is from an example, uh, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. The ululation, I like that word, the ululation rose behind them and spread along a series of short, sharp cries, the sighting call. Now, I like it when you have the letter S uh, in a very sinister scenario, as is the case with this. I'm not going to spoil the scene too much, but it's... It's a kind of scary part of the book. Now, the letter S actually looks like a snake and sounds like a kind of snake noise, right? And this really develops a sort of sinister tone in a story or a poem, I think. Um, with letters, they all kind of have sounds that we connect things to. So the S I often connect to a snake. Um, the an F sound, the f, 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 I connect to like wind or sometimes fire, the B or the P, the explosive sound, b, p, I often connect to like explosions going off, something quite big. Um, so these sounds often have connotations with us anyway. The next example from Birch is by Robert Frost, another poem. They click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many coloured, as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Now, I like this because I feel like the sound is onomatopoeic in a sense that, you know, you, it sounds like ice breaking, this cl and cr sound actually sh sounds like ice breaking. So I feel like, you know, we can use alliteration for making things sound like something in an onomatopoeic fashion. And finally, uh, we have I Know What the Cage Bird Sings from Maya Angelou. Up the aisle, she moans and screams, merged with the sickening smell of wool and black cloves, worn in summer and with mornings, worn in summer weather and green leaves wilting over yellow flowers. Now, I feel like the alliteration in here really draws our attention to something in particular, screams and a sickening smell. Um, the alliteration can make us focus on certain elements in an excerpt, in a paragraph, whatever. Um, so these are why we might use alliteration. How could we analyze it though? Well, this is from the opening sonnet, the kind of trailer for Romeo and Juliet. The opening sonnet basically tells the audience exactly what is going to happen. It's a big old spoiler. Um, and in the opening sonnet, Shakespeare uses alliteration in order to weave together the themes of life and death. Now, in the second stanza, the first two lines are, from forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Again, big spoiler alert. That's kind of the point of the opening sonnet. Um, so audiences know what to expect. But if you look here, what alliteration can you see? It's from forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Um, I see two pieces of alliteration, really. Uh, the first with the F and the second with the L. Now, by using alliteration, Shakespeare groups two distinct themes. The F sounds for fatal and foes are kind of neg they're negative connotations. It makes me think of like death and fighting. Whereas the L sounds, lovers, loins and life, are all very positive and depict life and love. Um, this example is actually from a student. And then we move up to level two. So Shakespeare weaves these two ideas together brilliantly. And whilst the sonnet as a whole foreshadows the death and the, their love and the eventual death, 
uh, the alliteration makes it seem as if it was almost inescapable and that develops the theme of fate in the play so make sure when you're looking at alliteration try to think why what is important what can we take away what does it make us think about and there's your level one thanks for watching guys